Florida International University pedestrian bridge collapsed, killing six people and injuring ten more. The collapse occurred 11 miles west of downtown Miami in Miami-Dade County, Florida. The Florida International University pedestrian bridge was located on the west side of the intersection of Southwest 8th Street and 109th Avenue. The elevated pedestrian bridge would have connected the university with the city of Sweetwater by extending over Southwest 8th Street and the parallel running Tamiami Canal. The first section of the bridge constructed was the span across 8th Street, and that was the section that collapsed. The bridge section was built on the ground in a construction yard adjacent to the roadway and then moved onto support piers using two self-propelled modular transporters. Building the bridge alongside the road before moving it into place is a construction process called accelerated bridge construction, which reduces on-site construction time and minimizes traffic impact. The overall conceptual design had the appearance of a cable stayed bridge. However, the central pylon and steel pipe stays were not load-carrying structural elements. Instead, the functional design was a truss structure that was unusual for being constructed out of reinforced concrete and also for having the truss members aligned in a single plane. The bridge section that spans Southwest 8th Street was 174 feet long and weighed 950 tons. It contained a deck, vertical and diagonal truss members, and a canopy. The truss members were numbered 1 through 12 starting from the south end of the bridge. The design of the bridge was non-redundant, meaning that failure of an individual truss member would cause collapse of the bridge. The concrete for the section was poured in three stages. First the deck, then the vertical and diagonal truss members, and finally the canopy. Separate pores form discontinuities in concrete structures called cold joints. In this bridge, cold joints were located between the deck and the truss members, and between the truss members and the canopy. Within the concrete, reinforcement was provided by steel bars and larger diameter steel post-tensioning rods. These rods were pulled in tension and locked into place after the concrete had cured in order to ensure that the concrete was loaded in compression. The post-tensioning rods and steel reinforcing bars were to carry the tension loads of the completed bridge. Before the bridge was moved onto the piers, truss members 2 and 11 were post-tensioned in the construction yard to counteract the tensile forces developed while the ends of the bridge hung over the transporters when the span was moved. After the bridge was placed onto the piers, truss members 2 and 11 were under compression and the post-tensioning rods were detensioned. Before the bridge section was moved into position on the piers, Cracks were observed in the concrete at and adjacent to the cold joint between the deck and members 11 and 12. The cracking got worse once the bridge section was placed on the piers. These cracks continued to grow over the next five days, and numerous photographs documented the progressive cracking in the structure. In response to the cracking, a decision was made on the day of the collapse to retension the steel rods in truss member 11. Workers were retensioning member 11 when the collapse occurred. The road was not closed while this work was taking place. The bridge section was placed onto the piers on the morning of Saturday, March 10, 2018. It collapsed five days later on the afternoon of Thursday, March 15, 
2018. The collapse began at the north end of the bridge, initiating at the coal joint between the deck and truss members 11 and 12. Large shear forces and insufficient reinforcement across the coal joint at this location led to the steadily growing cracks and structural failure. One bridge worker was killed in the collapse, as were five people in vehicles under the bridge. Five bridge workers and five other people were injured. The FIU bridge collapse serves as a crucial lesson in civil engineering, emphasizing the importance of rigorous design and safety checks to prevent future tragedies. Welcome to NPA InfraCon. Today, we explore the FIU bridge collapse, analyzing its causes, lessons learned, and recommendations to enhance safety in civil engineering. Three years ago, the catastrophic FIU pedestrian bridge collapse in Sweetwater killed six and injured 10. This tragedy underscores the critical need for stringent safety protocols. The National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, concluded that design errors by FIG bridge engineers and oversight failures led to the FIU bridge collapse. Misplaced shims and de-stressed truss members induced unexpected stresses, leading to significant cracking and eventual collapse, highlighting the need for accurate stress evaluations. Louis Berger's peer review, limited to the bridge's completed state, failed to identify critical errors during construction phases, emphasizing the importance of comprehensive analysis during all stages. The NTSB's recommendations stress immediate road closures beneath cracked structures, enhanced engineer training, and increased construction monitoring to prevent future collapses. The Federal Highway Administration should assist in developing requirements for accurate estimates of interface shear demand in concrete bridge designs to improve safety standards. The Florida Department of Transportation must revise its plans preparation manual to ensure thorough peer reviews and immediate action upon detecting structural cracks during construction. The American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials should collaborate with the Federal Highway Administration to develop better redundancy discussions in bridge design specifications. FIG Bridge Engineers, Inc. must train staff on proper shear resistance calculations and ensure peer review firms are pre-qualified to prevent future design errors. SCOS recommends contingency planning for potential failures, serious assessment of crack developments, and ensuring engineering decisions are made by qualified professionals to enhance safety. The FIU bridge collapse underscores the need for industry-wide improvements in safety culture, competency, and ethical engineering practices to prevent future engineering failures.